You have no power over me. If you would like to learn about fairy folklore, delve into modern fairy faith spirituality, and explore fun and fanciful fairy-themed events, please subscribe to Fairy Fortunes for new videos every Friday. Hello, my fair friends. I'm Ruby Ruse, and welcome to Fairy Fortunes. On today's episode, we're going to be exploring a brand new tarot deck by Minerva Siegel and the artwork by Thomas Hyjo. And I'm very excited that this new deck is based on the Jim Henson and David Bowie movie, The Labyrinth which if you've watched my video, the top 10 best fantasy movies of all time, you will know that Labyrinth is one of my favorite fantasy movies. This deck is brand new as of 2021, and it is now available in your favorite occult bookstore, or it's also on Amazon. I don't do a lot of tarot readings because I fell in love with the process of geomancy, which is what the Fairy Fortunes Divination System is based on. But when I saw that this deck had come out, I really was curious to see what it was. The box is really sturdy, which I really like that. Who doesn't like a good box, you know? <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty sturdy. Beautiful artwork on the cover there. Just lovely. The guidebook, look at this. This is one of the most substantial guidebooks I have ever seen. It's just really lovely and it has full cuddler photos in it of all of the cards. So it's really a special book. I also love that it has a foreword by Brian Froud, who was one of the creators of the Labyrinth movie. And it's, it's really substantial again. It's really made of really nice paper. So I really love that. And I just love that there's color photos in this book. It feels more like a little mini graphic novel. It's just really beautiful. Minerva Siegel is the one that put together the guidebook and the descriptions. And she is also responsible for another niche tarot deck, The Nightmare Before Christmas. She's also done a... According to this guidebook that I'm reading right now, she has also done a supernatural tarot deck. Okay, um, have you noticed that I have a tattoo on my arm <laughs> of Supernatural? <laughs> I may have to check out that tarot deck. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway, I don't know. Like what? Hmm. I wonder if Rowena is in the Supernatural tarot deck. I digress. I personally would love to see more of her work. The illustrator Thomas Higo was responsible for the Tarot del Toro deck, which I, that makes sense to me now because I was these cards reminded me a great deal of the Tarot del Toro. <laughs> and now I know why. It's the same artist. Amazing. Just beautiful artwork all around on this deck. I just love that it is clearly the labyrinth, so true. You, it's just unmistakable, but it has that beautiful Renaissance feel to the artistry in this deck. Like it's just a beautiful deck. I really, really enjoy it. The cards are a good size. It's very nice, thick weighted cardstock paper that has a little bit of sheen to it. So I, I enjoy that. It's got a nice finished edge on it. I'm not really sure that I love the back of the cards. With the artwork that's on the front of them, I'm just not sure that I'm in love with that design. I think they could have done something a little more in line with the movie. I think that this backing is to represent the door to the labyrinth or the door to the obelisk. Did I say that right? <laughs> the little room that keeps changing. Another thing that I'm not sure that I love about the back of these cards is that 
as you're shuffling, you would immediately be able to tell whether the cards are upright or reversed because they have different colors on each of the sides. So you would immediately be able to know what is coming to play in, in the reading. So I'm not sure how I feel about that. The first card that you open up to is the Fool, which I love features Sarah herself because a lot of people think that the Fool represents like foolhardiness. It can, but the Fool is actually the risk taker. He is taking a leap of faith usually. And that's what the story of the labyrinth is very much about. It's about Sarah taking this epic journey. It's a process of self-discovery, her journey through the labyrinth. So that's really unique on that one. I mean, if you're going to make a tarot deck based on the labyrinth movie, <laughs> the only option to place Jared is with the magician. So this just makes me happy to see him in this position. But something that I noticed is that the owl, his shape-shifting form, Jared is able to shape-shift and he takes the form of the winged owl, the barn owl, and he appears as the king of feathers. If both these cards were to come up in a, in a reading that you're doing, like, what would the layer of meaning be for that? <laughs> because, in my opinion, this is a transformation of the magician now in this deck. So what, what does that mean? Like, how could that be used in a reading? Like, how would you interpret that? Like, that's very exciting. I think that's why I really was interested to see what this deck was like, what it was about because I think that when you add the symbolism of a movie or mythology to the tarot, like there just is a whole layer, another layer of meaning within these decks. So what does this mean? What does it mean? But I love it. I, I don't know what it means yet, but I love it. I think my least favorite card in this deck is the High Priestess. I'm just having a difficulty understanding this particular card. This is one of the goblins, this is one of Jared's minions, and I, I just don't see the High Priestess as being the minion of the magician. So I'm really confused as to why the artist chose to go this particular route with the High Priestess. If you have this new tarot deck, the Labyrinth tarot deck, if you have an opinion about your ideals with this particular card, the High Priestess, I would really love to know your thoughts because I personally am just kind of confused by this one. One of my favorite scenes in the Labyrinth movie is the Goblin Ball and I love how they didn't use Jared and Sarah in this particular card. I love how it features the goblin dancers instead. I just think that it gives another layer of meaning to this card. And I love too that you could look at this as what masks are the lovers wearing. I just I think that's a very interesting concept. This is another one of the cards that's been renamed. But here they've renamed the lovers the dancers, which I think in the context of this niche labyrinth deck, I think this makes perfect sense. I really love this. Ludo appears as the hangman. I'm not sure how I feel about this card, actually. I mean, it does make sense because in the movie, the first time that Ludo appears, when you see him, he's being hung upside down by the goblins. So I think that that was a perfect way to incorporate elements from the movie into the deck of cards. But 
the hangman for me has always resonated with an Odin energy, and I'm not really sure how I feel about Ludo taking the Odin's position in the deck. So I don't know how I feel about that, but it does make sense in the context of the movie. So if I were to use this deck in readings, the hangman probably would take on a completely different energy for me because it features Ludo and not an Odin-like figure for me. They have made some changes to the names of some of the cards. For example, the death card is now renamed to Fate. To see name changes is very common in niche decks of the tarot. I just don't understand why people can't embrace death. Like, why do we have to change the name of that card? Why is it so terrible to say death? Why do we have to call it fate? I guess in the context of the movie Labyrinth, nobody dies. Toby is rescued and doesn't become a goblin. So it, it really isn't a story about death, but the tarot, I feel, should have the death card. Like we've, It's a concept that I feel really needs to be embraced, so I'm not sure how I feel about this card. I really wondered how they were going to use the junk lady in this deck. She is such a striking figure in the movie. She only appears briefly, but is such a meaningful moment in this much layered movie. And here she is featured as the queen of junk. They've renamed the suit of pentacles to junk, which I find fascinating. I really am looking forward to using this deck. Uh, one of the things that I have been working with in a magical context is something that I call accidental talismans. I feel like in our modern world is that especially Americans are too attached, I think, to our stuff. It just becomes clutter and junk. So it, I think readings would be fascinating to see how that would play out looking at pentacles which normally are seen as elements of abundance in the tarot and having that now become possibly clutter and junk. I just think that's a fascinating concept. This is just another memorable moment from the movie, which I just think is so cute that they found a way to capture this moment. Uh, this is the page of pots. <laughs> and it's, I just, I love it. Like if I were to do a reading and this card came up, I would just, it would just make me smile. It just makes me so happy to see this card. <laughs> Something to keep in mind about this tarot deck is it is a pip deck. If you're not familiar with what a pip deck is, in a pip deck, the suit cards look like playing cards. They just have basic representations of the suit itself and the number associated with the card. Modern day playing cards were actually based on tarot cards. So many artists prefer to use the more archaic and actually more historic version of tarot cards. However, I actually purchased this deck because I was going to be doing 
the event at the Gwen and I needed it to do tarot and not fairy fortunes to go with their tarot drink theme. And I just panicked because it had been a little bit of time since I had used my tarot decks. And so I decided that I didn't want to go with a pip deck because I wanted more symbology, more imagery to work with when I was reading cards for people at the Gwen. So that is something to keep in mind. However, what's great about a pip deck is that you don't have to be clouded by the imagery. You can just work with the numerology and work with the energies that are flowing through the reading and just be more intuitive. So there's a lot of positive and negatives that go with pip decks. I have yet to do a reading with these cards, so I'm going to do one real quick to see what it's like. <laughs> However, um, new decks are a little bit challenging to shuffle, I think. Uh, so I'm having a hard time shuffling them like playing cards, which I think is a great way to shuffle tarot cards because I just think you get a better uh, shuffling of the cards and you can reverse the cards a little bit better. So these are brand new and they just do not like being shuffled. <laughs> I don't think that that is a problem with the deck. I think that this is just a brand new deck and that's why I'm having difficulties shuffling it. So, but I, I do think that this would be a really, f um, once they're broken in a little bit, I think they would be easier to shuffle. All right, let's see. Ooh, look, I got the magician. I'm so excited. I can hardly contain myself. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, Jared's character was um, my favorite. I know that's rather boring. It is Sarah's story. She is the protagonist. She is the hero of the story. But Jared has his own unique journey. Whereas Sarah is really learning about what it means to be an adult, what it means to be a woman rather than a little girl, and taking responsibility and taking ownership of her life. Jared has another journey of his own. I feel like what he learns is he learns what love truly is. He has obviously been watching Sarah for a long while and has come to her rescue to take away the baby as she requests. And he loves her imagination and he loves her, I think, angst. Like he resonates with that, I think. And he, I do feel, loves her very, very deeply, but he wants to possess her. And at the very end of the movie, he learns what love truly is, and that is to learn how to let people be who they are and not who you want them to be. And I just think that that's really a beautiful journey that the Goblin King goes through as well. Hooray that I got the magician! Yay! Woo! And of course I got a lot of... Uh, <laughs> I got a lot of the um, <laughs> the suit cards, so that'll be challenging for me to read because I panicked and, like I said, when I was at the Gwen, I didn't. I took my other deck so I would have more symbols to work with, uh, so that I could cheat a little bit. So the first card that I have is the Page of Junk. I'm really excited to see the suit of junk because I wanted to see how that would work in a reading. And this card represents my strengths. <laughs> so that's, that's very interesting. I was talking about accidental talismans, which is a ideology of esoteric concepts that I designed myself. And actually I have that concept has manifested get back into my life. I had somebody reach out to me on Fairy Fortune saying, hey, I saw that workshop that you did. 
aren't you going to write a book on this? Aren't you going to have an online class about accidental talismans? And I, I admitted to this person that I had always wanted to do that, but that had just been placed on the back burner. So to see the page of junk, because the page represents risk, the page is the budding of ideas, if you will. So I think that that could relate to accidental talismans. I feel like we should only bring things of value into our lives. We should be very careful about what we bring in because all of those things become talismans in our lives and we want those talismans to have purposes that fuel us and propel us and don't contain us and confine us. So it's very interesting to see that card and I'm wondering if this is pertaining to the accidental talisman project that I put away for some time. Maybe it's time to bring that back into the forefront. The second card represents my weaknesses and here I have the Ace of Feathers reversed. Feathers in this tarot deck re relates of course to the element of air. I guess my weakness is that I, I think what this card could mean is that I am a perfectionist. I let that hold me back. Uh, the reason that I haven't really pursued accidental talism is more is that I'm like, oh, I need to do more research. I need more case studies. It's not ready yet. And I think that I'm too much in my head. And that might be what this card represents. I have another feather card reversed in the position of my past. That's the problem with <laughs> with pip decks. It's like, what does this mean to me? Twos are are about balancing uh, in in the tarot. Uh, two is in geomancy and astrology often relates to finances, and it's reversed. So when cards are reversed in the tarot, that usually means like more of an internal position. I just talked about that one of my weaknesses is that I'm too much in my head and and maybe this card is reflecting that again is I'm unbalanced because I'm too much in my head. I'm not sure. <laughs> I have the guidebook here. We can look it up. Let's see. Two of two of of feathers. What does that say? You're in disagreement with someone important in your life. As this card is of the feather suit, this disagreement is likely intellectual and involves politics, ethics, or big changes. You can't force someone to believe as you do. All you can do is present your perspective. Hmm. When I get into disagreements with people, I often like, I'm like, I just burn the bridge. <laughs> Because I'm like, oh, well, they'll never understand my perspective. <laughs> Ignite. Uh, so maybe this, so that's, that could be that. <laughs> I have another ace in this reading, the ace of poles. Poles refers to wands. So that is uh, the ace of, of fire. I, I would say that I am kind of questioning what I want to do. Like I said, I'm, I'm thinking about the Accidental Talisman Project again. So I think that this is asking me where I want to put my energy. Ooh, I have the five of poles reversed. Look at that. I know that fives represent strife, strife in the future, hard work fighting for what I want. And this is reverse, so that means it's an internal battle. So I, I think that is true. I, I, in my future, I'm going to have to fight hard for what I want. And then the final card is the Magician. And like I said, while the story of Labyrinth is very much about Sarah, I really love the journey of Jared in that story too. How he finally comes to terms with what love really is. And in the story of the labyrinth, 
Jared really has all the power. He can he has full control over the labyrinth at all times. So it's interesting to me that this card comes up in this final position for me because this suggests that I have all the tools that I need at my disposal and that my fate is uniquely in my own hands. I really enjoy this niche deck. Like the layers of meaning in this in this movie for me are just intense. So <laughs> I'm really excited about this deck. <laughs> I always forget that line. You have no power over me. I think that if I do any tarot readings again, I would totally use this deck, provided that I get a better... <laughs> need to brush up a little bit on my minor arcana. That's <laughs> what I need to do. But when I do that, wow, this is, uh, this is probably the only tarot deck I'm going to want to use from now on. It's unless I get the supernatural tarot deck. <laughs> if you liked this video and you like the movie Labyrinth, I think that you would also enjoy my video on the top 10 best fantasy films of all time. You may learn about a little fantasy gem that you have never heard of. So I do hope that you will check that video out. It will be in a panel right next to me. And with that, have a magical day.